You were head of the NIH, Francis, during the first Trump administration, but this time it seems as if things are very different. Can you compare the two terms? They are very different. During the first Trump administration, there were a number of proposals made that would have had pretty significant effects on research, but those were put forward, they were debated, they were discussed, the consequences were considered, and for the most part, any really drastic changes were seen not to be a good idea, that they would do more harm than good. And so NIH flourished pretty well uh, during that first Trump administration. Keep in mind that the way in which NIH gets resources are more due to the Congress than they are due uh, to the executive branch. The old statement is that the president proposes a budget, but then the Congress disposes and decides what they think the right answer is. And for many years, going back to about 2015, uh, the NIH was strongly supported in a bipartisan way uh, by both houses of the Congress and we're able to see a budget each year that grew a little bit, about inflation plus a couple of percent because of strong leadership from both parties, particularly in the Senate, but also in the House. That was a wonderful phase to be in because with that, you could increase the likelihood of somebody getting a grant funded. And you could also start new bold ideas like the Brain Initiative, for instance, that would be hard to do if the budget was really tight. And that all sustained itself pretty well during the first Trump administration. And then, of course, COVID came along in 2020, and everything got very intensely distressed at that point. And I lived through that period in ways I'll never forget. But we managed, and I will say, maybe we'll come back to this, what NIH was able to do with the development of those mRNA vaccines will be seen by history as one of the most amazing scientific achievements ever. The second Trump administration, which started January 20th, came in with a whole lot of other ideas and applied them really almost immediately in a flood of executive orders and other decisions that were coming from HHS, many of which have really been quite stressful on the whole biomedical research effort involving cutting jobs, uh, sometimes in a way that felt pretty indiscriminate in terms of which jobs were cut, and cutting budget situations uh, in a way that also uh, slowed things down, and also put in various kinds of controls of the grants process that have slowed down the ability to review new grants and have resulted in the termination of grants that were already underway. So altogether, it's been a pretty chaotic and difficult time. 